Hello everyone, this is Refrigerator Review, and we're here to talk about nonsense? Anything, everything, what's going on in our world, what's not going on in our world. I'm Danielle. This is Charlie. So... Well, we're here to talk about Refrigerator. This is Refrigerator <laughs> Review. <laughs> yeah, Refrigerator Reviews. Hmm. I mean, like, Whirlpool makes refrigerators, right? Yes, they do. We're very knowledgeable about refrigerators. That's why we named the podcast this, as you can tell. Uh, like, uh, we're just experts. No, no, we're not experts. I'm, I'm sure you had to hear that from me. That no. But uh, we were just giving this a try. Um, I, uh, this is this is my mom. And this is my son, obviously. Duh. Okay, no. okay. But she's the one that uh, got the microphone. She wanted to try out her hand at YouTube. And uh, hey, everybody's talking about YouTube. Yeah. I had to freaking try to jump on the bandwagon. It's just so popular. It is. It's it's like popular like podcasts. And people do YouTube on our podcasts on YouTube now, and not just the, uh, you know. Uh, I'm relatively new to the whole YouTube thing, yeah. so this is a learning curve for me. So be patient with me. Sorry. I mean, it's fine. Uh, if you didn't even know about like streaming and you mm -mm. didn't really know much about podcasts, I mean, you knew about Joe Rogan, but I did. Um, I, I, did. Don't, I don't know how much you listen to him. I listen to him all the time. I've just started the YouTube thing, just getting more familiar with it just in the last year. I mean, it's so, good. Yeah, it is. It is. I've been primarily focused on the whole reselling thing on the internet. So the whole podcast and streaming thing, well, that's just a whole new world for me. And just trying to get my feet wet and try to see what it's all about. I know um, you watch a lot of TV, like you and uh, Greg. Greg is Greg is my dad, and uh, he he watches a lot of TV and movies. Like he loves movies. He loves horror movies. Both of all of us love horror movies. Oh, who, yeah. who doesn't? Um, <laughs> but uh, they they don't really watch much YouTube. No. Um, Greg watches some movie reviewers on YouTube, but. YouTube has so much. It there's does. Like, there's billions of hours of content. It, it, it is. There's and there's so many that... different streaming services to choose from oh, now. Yeah. There's Shutter and there's Hulu and there's, um, you know, Disney. Certainly. And Netflix and all that kind of stuff. So it's kind of, you know, you never know if we're going to watch something brand new that's just come out or if we're going to watch something from, you know, 20 years ago. So, right, right. But. I mean. I mean, some people even go on YouTube and live stream episodes of a cartoon or a show until they get taken down and just keep doing it and over and really? over again. Yeah. I didn't and, even know they could do that. And, I mean, they get in trouble, of course, but they just keep putting them up because they, they make new accounts. So, is it just the luck of the draw as far as how fast they catch on? Or oh, do take... they have bots that look for that stuff? I don't, I don't know how it works, but oh. I've, I've, I've watched them a couple times. And uh, they they'll last for a couple hours, um, and or a few hours until they get taken down. You don't see it really with movies much, but you see it with um, with TV shows. I didn't know that. I yeah. just figured that automatically, as soon as they would detect something had been copied and put back up, I figured that automatically it would get taken down within hours. No, I I don't know. I'm not too good with it, but I did watch one. The last one I watched was a few months ago. Yeah. Um, it's not something I watch very often because I just I follow a lot of stuff. Um, but uh, but yeah, I'm I'm just shocked you never really watched it. No, I've yeah. actually never watched anything other than just people's videos people have put up. I've never watched any shows or any movies on YouTube. Ever. I don't I don't know how many of us have watched YouTube since it began, but we were talking about it earlier. YouTube's changed so much. It's crazy. Because people that make videos make them so, I don't know if you'd say professionally, but they're very well done, they're edited, they're clean, and used to it was like home movies. <laughs> it, it was it was just like whatever camera was around they picked up. I wonder recorded. how many times people actually put their home movies up on YouTube. Oh, I'm sure tons. I mean, I don't know. People do it for I mean, fun. I don't know if Most... anybody would care about, you know, the kid, the first time a child would ride a tricycle or something like that up on YouTube, but hey, maybe they are. I don't know. I don't know. People found it fun and more cute or... Or vacation know. videos or, you know, birthday parties. It's like, do people even care about that? I don't, I don't know. know. Um, That's weird. 
But, uh, you know, you think about, you know, the whole reselling thing because um, I used to resell on eBay and now I do the Amazon thing. But whenever I go looking for stuff like in thrift stores and garage sales and stuff, you'd be surprised whenever you get those big lots that have like boxes of, you know, old picture, people's old pictures or old newspaper clippings or old magazines and stuff. Yeah. How many times people, you know, and you just sell it as a big lot on eBay, how yeah. many times people would want those old pictures of people they didn't even know. And it was kind of weird, but inevitably I'd always sell those lots really fast. We, um, yeah, we did eBay for years. Uh, it was mainly, mainly you. I just kind of would do some stuff occasionally. I, I, I like to collect video games and sometimes I'd get an extra copy and I'd sell it just to make a little bit of money because, um, I didn't have a job. I was, I was really young. Um, I was around 13 to 16. Yeah. Yeah, age, so I wasn't going to be working just yet. And um, it was fun. It was so fun going to those sales. Well, it was like treasure hunting because no two sales are the same. Even oh, if no. it's at the same location, it's it's never going to be the same stuff. So you're, you know, like I said, you're treasure hunting. So you're always looking for that next great find or that next great thing that it's like, oh, my gosh, I used to play with this when I was a kid, and this is so cool. I can't even believe I'm seeing this. Oh. For sale at a church sale for you know a quarter or right. you know a dollar or something like that. It's so weird. It, it the excitement you feel when you do find something that you know what it's worth. Like um like I collect old games. It's like I found a copy of Conquer is Bad for a Day. It's like a hundred dollars and I find it at a sale for a quarter. It's I like, know. It's like oh my god. I know that's so weird. It's so weird or something that I used to play with when I was a kid that you know was dirt cheap that they sold all the time in stores and it's like then i haven't seen it in you know decades and it's like all of a sudden you see it at a garage sale and they think it's something you know crazy rare and they'll you know sell it for beans because they don't think that it's worth anything because it's old so many people have a misconception that if something's old that it's not worth anything or the kids don't play with it anymore and then you have the opposite end of the spectrum you have people that are like oh that's old it doesn't matter what it is it's worth money We've gone to both of those kind of sales where yes. they sell the stuff for dirt cheap or they'll try to sell an old magazine from the 80s for, you know, crazy yes. money. It's like, seriously, you know, do you want to get rid of it or, you know, right. why don't you put it on a collectible site and try to get something, you know, more reasonable? The worst people, though, are the people that have these old things and they they just throw out any notion of it being valuable mm -hmm. or people wanting it and just throw it away. Yeah. Because the item is destroyed. Right. Right. At least donate it. Exactly. Exactly. But, you know, one man's trash is another man's treasure. But it's, it is crazy what you see people throw away. That's for sure. When um, I was uh, younger, I liked to bring scrap metal to the scrapyard to get money. Like, you know, cans and um, wire and stuff. It was good money. Um but the economy has gotten worse and things don't really go for as much anymore. And a lot of people are more knowledgeable about looking for this stuff, so it's harder to find these items. Or grass figures. You were big on oh, finding grass yeah. figures at garage sales for, you know, 25 cents, 50 cents. Yeah, because um, they made brass figures. They made brass candlesticks. And, of Plug course, ends. of course, if it was a nice enough item, I, would, I wouldn't scrap it. I'd try to sell it on eBay or whatever. Right. But sometimes it would it was just like a candlestick or right. it, it wasn't even an ornate one it was like a trees and trends candlestick but brass was like two bucks a pound and i'd buy like a couple candlesticks for a quarter or 50 cents and make a little bit of money yeah so i'd get a box full of these and uh, full of these brass items and bring it in mm -hmm. and of course wire rod strip and stuff but um the best source was definitely garage sales oh yeah but next to that was getting the stuff that people threw out because yeah. it was free yeah. And if you knew where to look, um, storage units, mainly storage units, mm -hmm. and uh, they would throw out occasionally just like laptops, TVs, um, one time an air conditioner. Sometimes we found weird stuff. Like, oh, yeah. Uh, like one time I found a World War I metal trunk. Mm -hmm. Now, who throws something like that out? Who looks at a World War I metal trunk and goes, it's trash. You, you know what? <laughs> That's garbage. Exactly. Exactly. No, no, no one. No one. I mean, it's even hard to say, oh, they probably didn't know what it was. It was a 
it was a brown burgundyish trunk with white mm-hmm. stars on it and mm-hmm. almost like an army interior mm-hmm. to the trunk. It, oh, it, I remember. It, it was a lightweight wood with steel on the outside and a mm-hmm. leather handle. Mm-hmm. I think I, I think we ended up selling it online for a couple hundred dollars. Yeah, I think you're right. It's like that, we just found a couple hundred dollars in the trash. Yeah. What about those uh, digital lottery sign things that you found that time? Those were put in the trash. Yeah, they were like LED signs mm-hmm. that you could customize to say whatever you want. Mm-hmm. Those were neat. We, I remember I looked them online. They were like 40 bucks each new. Yeah. And I was even able to find the cords. They worked. Yeah. It's amazing what people get rid of. It's really, oh. And then some stuff that they should get rid of, they keep. It's like, really? What's the rhyme or reason there? It really sucked, though, whenever the dumpsters would be locked. Yeah. I understand why, because we saw people dumpster diving, and they would just throw trash everywhere i don't yeah. know how you can do that that's just yeah. so disrespectful yeah i mean you're diving through the trash but come on yeah don't make it don't make it to where it ruins everyone, it for everybody else don't, yeah don't make it to where everyone can't dumpster dive exactly it's good money yeah it is and some people do it because they have nothing else to do mm-hmm. um but yeah I, I remember stripping a wire and oh man so you, you could spend hours just stripping wire. You're probably looking forward to the sale up in Eureka. Yeah, in Eureka. Um, we we live in Missouri, um, just so you all know. We live in Missouri, and there's a sale that happens near St. Louis at Eureka. Mm-hmm. Once a year. Um, once a year, and it's in a Six Flags parking lot. Yeah, that now, sounds kind of weird. but Six Flags parking lots are massive, yeah. so it's a good idea. Yeah. And they rent out spots to people. It's like yes. a few parking s- spots big. Yeah, and they have vendors that come in, you know, that sell food and stuff like that. And then they'll have just regular average shows that come in. And they'll have a bunch of, some of them will have new items, but a vast majority of them have old, older or even antique items that they resell. And the sale only goes on just for one day. And just one. it's first come, first serve as far as. Um, getting there i mean you want to be able to get a parking spot because yeah. actually the parking lot gets so full that they end up having to turn people away oh you could pay money extra. you could pay extra money to, to get, get in, in early yeah like was it two hours early it, i think it's an hour early actually but it's well worth it's, it's like ten dollars so extra worth it. it's so worth paying the extra money also they have a whole area dedicated to food mm-hmm. and they have a whole area dedicated to car parts yeah they do the swap me yeah and Oh, man, if you're looking for, I don't know, fun carnival or, like, street foods, yeah. they have some good stuff. Remember your turkey leg you got? It was, it was like, a two-pound <laughs> turkey leg. It was a humongous turkey leg. It looked like something you'd find at, like, a Renaissance festival. I could put my fists together, and it wasn't <laughs> yeah. even as big. <laughs> they had smoked them, and they, they had good. this really long line of people that were trying to buy them as well yeah they were like it was like eight dollars for one Mm -hmm. which is you know carnival foods always expensive but man it was good but no there we always come away with all kinds of stuff to well i resell it but charlie usually just finds a few of the things to add to his gaming collection yeah i'm i have a bad habit with old video games i like to keep them even if i already have them because I just like knowing where I found it. I get I get to look at anything in my collection and remember the sale it came from. That's another thing with going to garage sales is you can, it's you never look at the house the same. You're just driving to the grocery store and you see the house you found this few hundred dollar item at for like a couple bucks and you're like, yep. hey, I remember the sale that happened there. Yeah. I wonder if they're gonna have a sale again soon. Yes, absolutely. I've said that so many times to Greg. We'll be going someplace and we'll go past and. He'll say, it's on such and such street. I was like, oh, I know where that is. He's like, how do you know where it is? I was like, we've gone to so many garage yes. sales. And that's right next door to the garage sale that I found this really cool blah, blah, blah. And it's like, he's like, how do you remember that? It's like, I don't know. It's made an impression on me. And I just, for whatever reason, that's right. how I associate different streets or the different finds that I find on those streets when we go garage sale. The building. most famous one to me is that Louisiana street. Mm-hmm. Because the house had like... Oh my god, it had collectibles from turn of the century till now. Well, the it guy was had, things you'd never see. The guy was a collector, and he yeah. was a hardcore collector. And he had passed away, and he was not married, and didn't have any kids, evidently. That's right. And they were auctioning 
the whole contents of his house and oh, he man, had awesome. the house was is an older style house and it was absolutely jammed full of any and all kinds of collectibles you could just dream of i mean from tools to movie he, memorabilia he had a whole to, room of toys to toys to train stuff i mean just and it was a beautiful house it was it was a it gorgeous was. house it was a rough location mm -hmm. but the house was gorgeous mm -hmm. and i wish we've we've learned so much about these collectibles over the years i wish because this was what how many years ago was this oh my gosh that had to have been six or seven years ago oh man that we went to that sale yeah, um, but that was definitely a really good sale that stood and i out. was like 14 15 yeah Man, if I knew what I did now about some of those old toys or like that blob poster that he oh, had framed. Oh, yeah, that was awesome. Oh, uh, I would have bought that. Yeah. And I wouldn't have sold it or anything. I would have no. kept it. I would have loved to have it. But all I bought was like, I don't know, some scrap metal that mm -hmm. he had in the basement. Yeah. At <laughs> this wonderful collectible <laughs> sale, all I did was buy some scrap metal. I, I think I kept a couple things. Um, yeah. Like an old hotel service bell. I thought that was neat. But yeah. Yeah, I, it was a shame that I didn't get that. And it's, and it's an even bigger shame that he didn't have anyone to give that stuff to. I know, it's so sad because I think that about different things that we find whenever we go to different sales or garage selling that I've acquired over the years. It's like, oh, jeez, you know, I pretty much, that's kind of how I decorate, you know, all of my house. The contents are of things that I find at sales. And yes. I think to myself of, you know, Charlie wasn't into this one day. It's like, would all of the stuff whenever I'm gone is like, is it going to just be put in a garage sale? Because it's just some of the things are just so unique and so cool. You never see it ever again in your life. Right. And it's like, it's just too cool for me to resell it. I have to keep it. Well, you know, our other family members wouldn't care. No. No. No, it doesn't mean anything to them because they're just like, oh, she just likes offbeat weird stuff. Yeah. It's always funny when I have people come over, let it be to fix something deliver something a or guest visit. yeah um they they look at everything like oh wow yeah it's it's <laughs> not in a weird way but yeah. in a it's not usual no zach said that one time it was like a museum yeah you did <laughs> well i mean look behind you there's a suit of armor i know behind behind my mom right here is a suit of armor that how tall do you think that is? Like seven feet tall? Yeah, he's like seven feet tall, and he stands in the corner in our eating area. <laughs> and, and we found him at a garage sale. Yeah, garage sale that's feet away from our house. Yeah. For 30 bucks. Yeah. Now imagine someone selling a suit of armor, mm -hmm. seven feet tall, mm -hmm. for 30 bucks. Yeah. Those are the kind of people that you see at sales, and those are the kind of people you want to see at Oh, sales. yeah. We looked at each other. We're like, oh, we're getting this. Oh, there's no way. We, <laughs> we weren't leaving without it. Oh, definitely. And, and this, was, this was about four was... years before we got... Okay, so the, the house that we live in currently that's feet yeah. away from the sale, we bought this house. Mm -hmm. and we Last moved, summer. We moved in um, six, seven months ago, something yeah. like that, beginning of June, mm -hmm. uh, 2019. Mm -hmm. And we went to a sale here like five years prior mm -hmm. and bought the suit of armor. Right. We never would have guessed we would have been buying this house and no. moving in. No. And the same people still live at that house. Yep. Yep. Uh, Just adjacent to where we are. Yeah. It's crazy. It, it's it's insane. It's really silly how things work out sometimes. Yeah, it is. And, um, and uh, we've never seen a suit of armor that big. Mm -mm. Like at a sale. No. I mean, we've seen little mini ones um, before, and they're always expensive. Yeah. They're never cheap, never 30 bucks. Well, Greg found that, that smaller one at Eureka Sale, remember? Yeah, but it's had... like the size of a child. Yeah, it is small. But still, it's cool. Yeah, it is. Um, I mean, the, the fines. We can, we can go on and on about the fines, mm -hmm. but uh, I mean, soon. Uh, when, when is it? Middle of May? No, the end of May. It's the a end Memorial of Day May. weekend. Memorial Day weekend from... Wh where does it start and finish? Um, it starts in Jackson, Missouri, and it ends um, at the Missouri-Arkansas border. It's, it's 100 miles. It's a 100-mile garage sale. Yeah, that's what we, they call it. We go to this every year. Mm -hmm. and um, It is our jam. It is awesome. It's yeah. three 
grueling days yes of walking in usual rain or heat yes and sometimes both yes and, and we go at like six in the morning the rain and, and we will go until we tire out which is usually midday yes and we just go from sale to sale and vendors set up and sometimes just on the roadside sometimes it'll be at a church sometimes it'll be in their garage it just depends but the whole sale that, that it spans people will just be set up all over randomly yes selling all kinds of merchandise i mean a huge variety but it is by far our very favorite sale all year long we see a lot of the same people yeah and some people are really cool mm -hmm. um and we ex we know what to expect from them mm -hmm. and then some people we're we see on the sale every year and it's like Oh man, I wish they weren't there. Like right. they'd be selling a bunch of new laundry detergent or vacuums, yeah. and it's like I don't know how many people stop at your sale, but it's kind of weird yes. to have that. I don't. But then, then there's but then there's those few people that we recognize seeing each year that will always have the very best, coolest things that we're yes. just like, oh, we have to be at a pass to their stand because they will have stuff that we will have to try to wheel and deal to get. But uh, it's just too cool. It's an it's an awesome, awesome sale. And we definitely look forward to it, no matter what the weather is. It, I mean, literally, we have gone to it in pouring down rain. And some of the vendors, most of the vendors will still be set up. And they'll just have their stall set up so that it's covered. But you're, I mean, you're soaking wet. And, and you just, you go, and we just absolutely love it. It's so fun. Once it hits noon. Yeah. And past in the day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The traffic's too much to bear, but mm -hmm. we're already tired by that point because it's like um, she said, we leave at six. Yeah. And sometimes at five. Yeah. Depending on how we feel or what it looks like. Yeah. Because those people will go out there at that time. Oh, they're not. They're not going to turn away customers. There will be a ton of people. They're not going to turn out year. customers unless they're crazy. I mean, yeah. like, why would you turn away customers? Exactly. Especially, it's just that one, you know, it's that one week and it's like, that's it. I would I would highly recommend to anyone that lives in Mill America near um, Jackson, Missouri, to the Missouri Arkansas border, mm -hmm. to go to it. Oh yeah. So pretty much anyone in Missouri, it, it's wonderful. Yeah, because we have that one at the beginning of summer, and then at the end of summer is the sixty-one mile sale. Yeah. It's not as good, but it's still a really good. It's sale still too. great to go yeah. to if you're nearby. Um, it doesn't cost anything but gas no. money to go to these. Yeah. And there's never any places that are set up that make you pay money to enter. No. There's no. never. And like I said, it's a huge variety of stuff that you'll find. You'll find from clothes to collectibles to antiques we've to been going handmade for, things. We've been going for seven or eight years. Mm -hmm. um, this will be our seventh or eighth. Oh, and it's a sale we totally look forward to. I mean, it's like we pack the cooler full of drinks and snacks and stuff like and that. And I because get the big of, goldfish thing. Yeah, because some of the, uh, the areas, it's like it's in a more rural area so that you may span several miles where there's no convenience yeah, there's stores, nothing. there's no, um, you know, McDonald's or anything like that to get something to drink or something to eat. So we just bring a bunch of snacks and drinks with and us. And you get grungy. If you're out for <laughs> yes. all those hours, especially if it's the hot weather, yes. you get dirty, mm -hmm. you get um, sweaty. Oh, yeah. And once you do find a convenience store, it's like, oh, thank God. I can, yes, <laughs> wash my hands. I can, I can have a... I can <laughs> I have a homeless shower in the sink and clean myself <laughs> off. It's true. I mean, it sounds gross the way we were describing it, but it's so, but we look forward to it. Oh, we fill up the car with cool stuff. We do. Some years are not as good as others, but you got to think in that year, there's not only the 100 mile sale, there's the 61 mile sale, the Eureka sale, mm -hmm. um, a few others, uh, Black River Coliseum. Yeah. Um, that we went to in Carbondale. Was no, it? that's in Poplar Bluff. Poplar Bluff. Okay. Yeah. And, um, and then just the normal the garage normal sales. sales that are and around then the us. normal church sales. There's some yes. really good church sales around us too. Yeah. Um by the way, anyone who came here looking for refrigerators, I'm very sorry. <laughs> yes. This is uh not at all about refrigerators. <laughs> and I'm sure you were very disappointed and will leave a dislike on the video. But for anyone that doesn't care about refrigerators and is happy to hear about garage sales and other spiel, please leave a like because that'll help. <laughs> <laughs> All right, enough about self-promoting. Um, 
when, when when exactly was the Eureka sale? What day is that? It is this year. It is on February 29th. It's on leap year. Okay. And like I said, we get there. I think that the early birds can get there like at six, and I think it goes until Let's like see. two or three. Okay. And it's one day only. Well, anyone, and it's awesome. anyone that lives in the area, especially around St. Louis, um, cause St. Louis is a bigger area. Yeah. Um, stop by. But that sale, you do have to pay to get in. You yeah. have to pay at the at the Six Isn't Flags it gate. A dollar or two dollars? No, not for the early bird. No, I think that you pay by the carload, and I think oh. it's like ten dollars for the carload, and it's like ten dollars um, to get in early. So it's like twenty dollars just oh, to okay. get in. But like I said, you know, it's, it's so fun. It's well worth it. It's I mean, if they fun. have one vendor there, they have over well over a hundred. Well, it's like an event. Yeah. And if you, whatever you like, they have it there. I've seen taxidermy. I've seen video games. I've seen art, furniture, toys, um, food, uh, cars, just about anything. Yeah, they do. It's a huge, huge variety. But usually it's very cold for the sale, but it's not a deterrent for people showing up at all. We're not trying to promote it as much no. as we are just trying to get other people to have the same amount of fun we do with it. Oh, yeah. Because, it's such you know, a good experience. whenever we started off, we didn't know anybody else that did what we do. No. As far as going to all the different sales and stuff in the area. So we were always scouring the internet, trying to find other sales to go to, other cool big sales like, you know, the Eureka sale or the 100 mile sale yeah. that we've been talking about. And it was kind of trial and error because we went to some, you know, sales that, you know, they would promote on the internet and we would go to them and they would like kind of Craigslist. be Craigslist. Yeah, we'd be, they'd be a flop or whatever. Yeah. So since we've been doing this for so many years, we've kind of realized the good ones and the bad ones. So we thought that if we could help anybody else that maybe is on the same kind of quest that we're on with finding new sales for them to, to try, that we would pass on some of the things that we have learned, the tricks of the trade as far as the sales that we try to make it to each year. Yeah, um, I don't know how it is in other areas, but I know our area, um, they put out signs in like specific locations. Yeah. Um, they'll put like a bunch in just one area, like one intersection. Right. And I don't know if it's like that in other areas, I'm sure it is, but yeah. um, if you can find those areas yeah, and find them on like Thursday or Friday mm -hmm. when people put those signs out, there's more and more signs accrue over the weekend. Oh yeah, and it, if you if you see those mass groups of signs, write them down. Write them down and use or GPS take, or take pictures on your phone, take and then pictures. you can just reference the reference where the addresses are from the yeah. from the pictures on your phone. That's easy too, because not everybody pays to advertise in the newspaper, and no. not everybody goes online to enter to advertise their sales as well. And not everyone needs to. If yeah. they're those big intersections where people just put mass groups of signs, it's right. it's easy. Yeah. Because neighborhood sales are always fun, too. Neighborhood sales are fun. Yeah. It's an entire neighborhood of because people doing you, garage you know, sales. Because, you you're parking on a said street, and there'll be, you know, a bunch of sales all on one street, and then you can just hop in your car and go to the next street, and yeah. it's a whole cluster of sales as opposed to just going door to door. You yeah, know, and you don't searching. have to pay for that either. No. You, the only ones you have to pay for are, like, usually, like, the big indoor sales at, mm -hmm. like, a huge building. Mm-hmm. Uh, or, um, like, that parking lot sale in Eureka. Yeah. Those are the only ones that we've come across. Because they do rent for. out booths, so yeah. they want to get their money back. So if you live in an area where you have a 100-mile sale equivalent or whatever, put it down below. Let us know where it is, and maybe we'd have to drive there to check it out. Yeah. Because that could be cool, venturing out of the area. As you can tell, we very much like garage sales. Um, yes. It's a big part of our lives. Yeah. And we have a house full of cool stuff. Yeah. And we still go garage selling. Um, we've considered doing videos on stuff we find and maybe yeah. even stuff we already have found. Yeah. And I think it's a great idea, um, but it just depends if people want to see it. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. There's some stuff we just find that's so incredible. So you yeah. don't see it very often. Because I know I look at people's videos of stuff that they find because it's just like yeah. I have appreciation for it because it's like, ah. Oh. That's so cool. Oh, I love watching um, YouTube videos about people finding the old video games because yeah. some of those consoles were just so incredibly rare. Yeah. And well, even some of the thrift stores, sometimes you're amazed. You know, I go to Goodwill and um, Goodwill, yeah. Yeah, I go to Goodwill and I go to some of like the Woman's Safe House and you know when I'm in St. Louis. Go we to, used to have a Salvation Army, but yeah, we don't anymore. The St. Vincent de Paul thrift stores are a really good one too. 
you know, where you can go and you can find all kinds of cool stuff. But, you know, I don't know. It's just sometimes you go and it's like, yeah, a few mediocre things you find, but then there's those times as you go and it's like, I cannot believe what I found. That is fabulous. <laughs> yeah. Um, with her selling now on Amazon, um, Goodwill's great for her because you find a lot more new products. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. She likes Goodwill. I hate Goodwill. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't hate Goodwill as a business or anything. I just don't find anything there. Yeah. Um, it's very rare for me to find something. Uh, occasionally I'll get like maybe a shirt yeah <laughs> but other than that I don't find anything for my collection and I really don't find anything to sell nothing like that I think there's a lot of resellers anymore so there's a lot more competition and yeah. stuff like that you know but I don't know but they changed with how they do things so they much do. like they, they research a lot more yeah you can tell and it's you know it's all a matter of who's doing the pricing on that day because sometimes they put crazy prices on some of the stuff that you wouldn't think they'd price it at what it is and it's based off solely what they're seeing on the internet it would have to be right but uh, i don't know i don't know i still like going though i don't go as much as i i was going but i'm just waiting for garage sale season to start yeah it'll it'll i hope to this year is a good one the weather has been so weird the worst thing that could happen is rain mm -hmm. it doesn't make people not go but right it's so muddy and gross yeah and there are some people that don't set up shop because of the rain yeah well there'll be those people that have their garage sale already set up ahead of time and some of the stuff will be in their driveway yeah and it'll get rained on and if it's some kind of wonderful collectible it's gotten rained on for however many hours and that kind of sucks you know right but i don't know hopefully we'll find some more good stuff this year I just enjoy the, the whole treasure hunting aspect of it. It is like a treasure hunt. It is. Even going to the thrift stores is like a treasure hunt. It if is. If you're that into it. Yeah. Any of that kind of stuff is. Because, you know, you never know what you're going to come away with. If it's going to be something fabulous or if it's just going to be something just so, just out there. It's like, really? Where did they even find this, you know? Right. But. Yeah, I remember when I first started going, we found like, or we found like a banjo made of a turtle shell. I know. <laughs> that one was weird. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. It's like some folk art thing. We can go on forever talking about garage sales, but uh, and finds. We were talking about YouTube earlier, and uh, I don't know how many people listening or just in the world has thought about doing YouTube channels. Yeah. But I did a YouTube channel when I was twelve maybe mm -hmm. um 11 something like that back in 2010 and um 2010 uh youtube was different it was i went back and saw some of those old videos and just to spare me embarrassment <laughs> i will not tell you these videos because <laughs> i were so cute yeah you're my mom <laughs> you're obligated to say that um <laughs> um it was so fun. Oh, I you did, were so proud of what you were making. I did it for so. Uh, I did it because it was fun. Um, I was a kid. I liked building stuff. I made. Yeah. I made air guns, which I guess someone of my age shouldn't have been doing. Um, I made little peg guns that were little like uh, you know the closed pegs you turn into where they could shoot toothpicks. Um, I made duct tape wallets. I yeah. even made a duct tape backpack purely out of duct tape, nothing yeah. else, and. Uh, I, uh, I I built all kinds of stuff, and I and I just like to share it. Um, it was it was fun. It was purely fun. I didn't even know you could make money off of it. I remember yeah. other kids at school, and even their parents, when I come over, would be like, "Oh, you do YouTube? Well, well do you make money off of it?" I'm like, uh, "No, it's fun." <laughs> yeah. And I should have I should have made a little bit of money off of it because I think my total views was two two hundred thousand, close to that. Yeah. I think it was one hundred and seventy thousand, something like that. I don't know. I'd have to go back and look. Yeah. But I don't know how much that would be back 10 years ago. I don't know. But like I said, it's all changed, so I'm not for sure. It's crazy to think how many people on YouTube got famous 10 years ago. Yeah, isn't that the truth? Yeah, I didn't even really watch YouTube very much 10 years ago. I didn't really start watching YouTube until about 2013. Well, I had this misconception that YouTube was just something that you went to, like, to know how to do something 
not necessarily just for like entertainment entertainment as far as like you know garage sale finds i thought it was how to change a tire or you know nope. i was totally yeah. confused or how to make whipped it's cream or something you know it was just something like how to thing is what i was yeah. under the impression that it was for there's how to's there's yeah. mu there's music music is a huge part of youtube people right. want to listen to music a lot of people just go to youtube right they don't have to pay right and uh and they, they those 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 videos get tons of views because i mean oh, I'm they, sure. like i said you don't have to pay yeah spotify you have to pay for youtube you don't you spotify is a better service but you know um there are some artists i like to follow that are only on or, well they originated on youtube like jack stauber jack stauber is awesome i've been telling you about him yeah showing you his music uh, anyone that hasn't listened to jack stauber and likes more funky um alternative music i, I don't even know how to describe what it is go yeah. ahead and go ahead and give it a listen it's jack stauber um he just put out a new album i need to listen to it but uh yeah you're you're new to the whole youtube thing not I just am. not just making stuff but listening to it and watching it I know. I'm going to have to become more versed in what all's out there and what all you can stream and watch and all that good stuff. I don't even really watch TV anymore. I just watch YouTube because YouTube has so much. Um, I, I wish I would have done. I wish I would have been one of those people that made it big doing Let's Plays back in the day. It, it's crazy um, what Let's Play series were like around 2013 to 2015 16 let's play what's that let's play it's like it's it's just recording yourself playing a video game oh okay and uh <laughs> they just call it let's plays yeah like let's play morrowind let's play right. skyrim let's yeah. play um the new call of duty fortnite no it's pretty much fortnite now yeah um but uh fortnite yeah I wish I would have done that. And uh, there's a lot of games that are popular or famous that I never played until, like, just recently. And uh, I don't know. It would have been fun back in the day doing, like, a blind run because uh, I was pretty, I was pretty, uh, I don't know. I just didn't really play, like, Oblivion. Like, Oblivion's famous. Uh, it's huge. And all I did was play Skyrim. I was a Skyrim boy. <laughs> <laughs> and apparently Oblivion was better and I've played it now and I, I need to play more of it but I can see why people say it's better it's it's a great game you know I don't video game yeah you don't play video games I the only video I... game I know you've really played is like Donkey Kong Country yep I'm old school old Donkey I don't know Kong how to, Country I don't know even know how to use a PS4 controller clueless so like a beginner game <laughs> I don't know yeah, what the hell do you mean a beginner game I don't know <laughs> For somebody that's like me that doesn't even know how to use a PS4 I controller or any I don't of know. the newer style controllers. You could play, I don't know, I like mean, I, one, we, two, three, math, let's go. I don't know. Some I mean, simple I, kids I, game, maybe. <laughs> I kind of tried to play the Nintendo Switch a couple times because we have the Donkey Kong Country game. <laughs> but I was having a hard time with that. With Nintendo game systems, they do old school controllers. Mm. And they have the old games on them. I know. I mean, just to get more nowadays. There's got to be other people that are like me that don't know how to use the new new style controllers. Well, I've always been a console player, and uh, I know some people hate that. <laughs> some people are like, it's PC only. And I've been getting into playing PC more and more, specifically to play uh, games like Stalker, um, Shadow Chernobyl, and uh, Morrowind. Because uh, Oblivion was like an eye-opener, and then I heard Morrowind is just crazy. And it is. It is crazy. Like, uh, you don't play video games. Um, but in Morrowind, I, I ran across a quest called, it was like, Rabina's Inner Beauty. And it, it, it was, it was all about, um, getting this, uh, Khajiit. It was like this cat person slave across the country, um, to, to someone for payment. And the Khajiit had, um something special in their stomach that they call moon sugar which is <laughs> which is like their what <laughs> which is like their crack and um yeah you bring them the the khajiit slave and uh they just they kill her and get the cocaine or oh crack gosh. out of her the moon sugar 
That's and, terrible. And the moon sugar is an ingredient to make a strong drug called skooma. <laughs> and what? In Morrowind, they pic- they picture all the animal races, specifically the Kaji, as like these horrible drug addicts oh, that gosh. love moon sugar and skooma. So you'll be walking around Morrowind, and there's a Kaji. And they're like, oh, what can Khajiit do for you? <laughs> and as you're walking away, they just go, oh, sweet moon sugar. Or, oh, sweet skooma. Really? Yes. And, and You're not making this no, up. No, <laughs> and if you have these on you, because you sell stuff to make money, any merchant that you try to sell to, if you have skooma or moon sugar, is like, I don't want any trouble. You're going to get rid of that moon sugar or skooma <laughs> right now. And you could just put it on the ground in front of them, and then they let you trade. Oh, gosh. It, it's, it's really funny. It's a 2002 game, so it's all jank. Oh. But it's beautiful jank. It's wonderful jank. Oh, gosh. Um, but it, it's weird to <laughs> see how much it Elder sounds, Scrolls. Yeah, it sounds like strange subject matter, but I'm sure it's crazy popular. I remember all back right. in 20, okay. 2012, 2011, you got me um, Skyrim. Yeah. And... Uh, it's crazy how different Skyrim is to games like Morrowind or Oblivion. Yeah. Especially Morrowind. Morrowind's much darker. Morrowind, uh, is a, I mean, like, the, some of the words they use, I wouldn't expect them to use in, in Elder Scrolls, let alone games these days. And uh, it's, it's awesome how it's still playable, even though it's 18 years later. 18 wow. years later. That's almost how long I've been alive. That's crazy. Yeah. Jeez. I'd never heard of it. Yeah, it's it's new to me too. I've heard of it, but I've just never played it. But I know you haven't played games, and I thought I'd share a dark story <laughs> from one of these games just to really get you thinking. A dark story. Yeah. A dark story from a video game. Dark story from a video game. A yeah. good video game that is dark in itself. Well, whenever I did play video games, the little bit that I played them, nothing was dark. It was just all animated Donkey Kong. I mean, there's plenty of games that, that nowadays aren't dark. Yeah. People like to find the dark side in those, though. Yeah, I think that probably the scarier ones are probably the more popular ones, though. Uh, horror games are pretty rare. A lot of companies don't do horror anymore because uh, oh. horror games can be great or they can just be absolute trash and no one will buy them or play them. Really? I think the easiest game for people to make anymore is, like, shooters. Mm. Um, and lately it's been Battle Royales. Battle Royales have been dominating. Yeah. I know you don't know much about the stuff, but I'm sure you've heard of like Fortnite right. and, and Player Unknown's Battlegrounds or better known PUBG is what it's called mm. to most people. Um I don't really care for battle royals. I, I don't like the idea of just dying and then it my it's over. All that time I spent is for nothing. Right. Um but I also just don't really care about shooters anymore. Right. Uh uh, the next big game I'm probably excited about is Elden Ring. Um, Does it come out next month? I don't know when it comes out. No, not oh. next month. There'd be all kinds of announcements. I, oh. It might be next console generation or whatever. And I'm really looking forward to next consoles. Um, I hope they improve upon things that were they they had problems with, like Xbox One and PS4. Mm-hmm. My biggest issue was uh, <laughs> the hard drive space. It was so small. Yeah. But um. Yeah, I just I just thought I'd bring that up to share some of the <laughs> the gaming world with you, uh, like a foreign language. <laughs> I just want everyone to know I, I we have dogs all around us now. We have uh, we have three dachshunds. Um, three. Yeah, th- I said three. <laughs> I know. I'm just saying three. Yeah, yeah three. It's hard to believe. <laughs> One of them's new. Yes. How old is she now? She's almost eleven weeks. They're all they're all girls. Um, yeah. And they're one's brown, two are black, and they're they're uh, they're very sweet. <laughs> yeah, they are. They the new one likes to, is very spastic, but the other two are just they just want to sleep. <laughs> yeah, they want to sleep and they're, eat. <laughs> they're a few years old. They love their food. We yeah. like to put they like they like sweaters on them. Yeah, I know. I know. Animal owners might say, "Oh, we like wearing the sweater." No, these do. They pout if they don't wear their sweater. Yeah. They get cold. Yeah, they do. Um. But the new one's name is Lola. Uh, the oldest one is Zoe, and the middle one is Mia. Yes, they're sweet girls. We never had a dachshund until Zoe, 
Mm-hmm. And we found out that dachshunds are just awesome. They're they're not only amazing pets; they're just amazing animals. They're they're they wonderful. Each, yeah, they each have their own little personality. They're so different from each other. And just how they interact with each other and the way yeah. they play, they're funny. We to talk watch. to them all the time. We play with them all the time. Oh we yeah. We give them a bunch of different foods. Oh yeah, I talk to them like they're people. <laughs> can't help it i just do i know <laughs> i know you do i'm gonna have to let them out okay but... well do you want to wrap it up here yeah i think we better i'm yeah. gonna have to let the girls out to i think go this potty. was a i think this was a this was fun. successful refrigerator review it if was I say so myself I it think, was it is fun i think the uh whirlpool stainless steel <laughs> tga max is the best absolutely i think that's the best bang for your buck <laughs> Uh, has all the neat features. All the newest features. Um, yes. But if this does well, we might do more. If we if it doesn't do well, we still might do more. It's fun. Um, yeah, we like it to is. vent and talk about nonsense. Uh, and if you have any information to add in the comments as far as where sales are around you, please feel free to leave them down below. And we appreciate you taking the time to listen to us today. All right. Bye bye. <laughs>